Machine learning at the end usually involves a few things. Collecting your data, training a model, and then deploying that model to classify things in real time. And that's exactly what this project is aiming to do. You'll be able to take a microcontroller, capture some data, train a model, and then redeploy to show gestures in real time as they occur. So now let's go through some of the hardware. The microcontroller for this is mounted on here, which is the Thunderboard Sense2 from Silicon Labs. It has the EFR32MG12P system on chip, which features an ARM Cortex M4 processor, 256 kilobytes of RAM, and one megabyte of flash, which is ample space to store the model and all the other data that goes with it. And now this board is also special because it contains a whole suite of sensors. Now the main one we're interested in is the ICM2648, which is a six axis IMU. Now that means there's three axes for the gyroscope and three other axes for the accelerometer. And we'll be taking these readings from the accelerometer to then train the model. Now I'm beginning this project by going and clicking create new project and then typing in the name. So I will just call this Thunderboard Edge Impulse. Go and create it. And now we can go ahead and start by attaching a device. Now on the Scilabs Thunderboard Sense 2 page, which will be linked in the description, you'll be able to find the latest firmware and also a way to install the Edge Impulse CLI with Node Package Manager. So after downloading that firmware, go and drag it and then drop it into the Thunderboard uh, 004 drive that gets attached whenever you plug in the board. And then after doing that, wait about 30 seconds and then you'll see it flashed. Okay, so now that the device has the firmware on it, we'll go and run the Edge Impulse Daemon, and that allows us to set up the keys, the project, and then any other parameters that we need for collecting the data. Now to verify that it's connected, we can go over to our Devices section. As you can see, it's now showing up, and we have our built-in accelerometer and built-in microphone. Now it's time to start collecting some data. I'll be using the built-in accelerometer with a frequency of 100 Hz and then a sample length of 10 seconds. And we'll be collecting data for four different gestures, a circle, a zigzag, up and down, and left and right. So we'll go and add the first label, pick up the board, and then click start sampling, and then just move the board in a circular motion. And we'll go and keep on repeating this until we get a few minutes of data. And finally, we need to add a fifth label, which will be called none. And this is the default one when no gesture is detected. And for this, we can just set it down and then click start sampling and let it go. Okay, and now that all of our data is collected, it's time to go ahead and design the impulse, train the model, and then deploy it. So at the beginning, we have a time series data block, which takes in our three axes for the accelerometer, has a window size of two seconds, and then a window increase of 80 milliseconds. Then we'll need a spectral analysis block to convert those three axes into features, as well as filter them first. And then finally, a learning block. And what this will do is take those features and then output a label or a classify. So we can go and save that, come on over to spectral features, and let's go and choose just one of our samples. And here you can see the output. So here we have a low filter with the cutoff frequency of three in order of six. And then this sets up the fast Fourier transformation, which can process the uh, spectral power and also frequency domain. So I'm gonna save those parameters and then generate all these features based on those filter settings, uh, which we can then pass to the model. And here you can see our output. So each color grouping is the feature that was detected. And you can see that it's really nice tight grouping all around here, which means that our classification process should go pretty well. Uh, the training shouldn't overfit. Although you can see the potential issue here of zigzag and left and right uh, being misclassified. But again, they're quite grouped together. So probably not too much of an issue. Okay, so then heading on over to our classifier, 
We'll go and set it for 40 training cycles. We'll leave it at the default learning rate and we can keep it at our 60% minimum confidence rating, but possibly change these parameters uh, if the model is not accurate enough. Let's go and train it and see what it comes up with. Okay, and here's our training performance. So we reached 100% accuracy. Our confusion matrix looks perfect. And as you can see here, the groupings are also fine. So that's good. Although we want to make sure that the model isn't overfitted. Uh, and if it is, then we have to go back and collect more training data with a bit more variation. So here we can go over to model testing and this will go through and classify all of our previously selected uh, test samples and just make sure that those are also accurate. And here we go. So we can see that they're pretty much all accurate except for the left right one, which got misclassified. Six of them got misclassified as being zigzags, which isn't that bad. You know, it's still really good accuracy overall. So well above our 60% threshold. And here we can go to deployment and then we'll build it for our Thunderboard. We also wanna make sure that we use the Eon compiler and what that will do is take the model and then squish it down into a much smaller size, which will save on ROM and also a bit of latency. Again, confusion matrix, pretty good. That's what we came up with when doing the uh, model testing classification. So it looks good to go. So we can go and click build and then download it and flash it. So now that I've downloaded the firmware that we just built, I can then go back to the TB004 drive that popped up and then just copy over that bin file. After that flashes on the board, then we can run it in the terminal. So here in the command prompt, go and type in edge impulse, run impulse. And what this will do is call the onboard function in the bin file and then inference it. So here I'm moving it back and forth. Then here you can see it classified as left, right. So here up, down, I'll do a circle. And then finally a zigzag. So as you can see, the model was quite accurate because we got a lot of good data and then made sure that they weren't overlapping. So if you were to do a circle, but then a half circle, that would be a really difficult task to complete. So to learn more or even make your own deployment with more sensors, you can go to the Edge Impulse docs and view this page by using Simplicity Studio with Thunderbird Sense 2. You can download the base repository, open that up, copy over your files once you've built the model, and then run it. What this allows you to do is use the forwarding tool to gather data from other sensors. So maybe the CO2 sensor, the light one, or a microphone. Train it, and then redeploy it to your board to do other things. And this allows a lot more flexibility, as well as the option to use Bluetooth. And for that, they even have another example about streaming Bluetooth data over to a phone uh, via BLE GET. The Thunderboard Sense 2 is a great and cheap way to incorporate machine learning into a project. With this powerful onboard processor and lots of storage space, there are tons of models that you could come up with, along with incorporating various sensors and I.O. The onboard Bluetooth low energy radio also allows it to communicate with other devices, which makes it perfect for building a versatile, connected IoT device that also incorporates machine learning for on the edge uses. So to learn more, make sure to go check out the description or the Hackster project page.